All right, guys, we're going to continue our look at Reconstruction by examining the moves towards radical Reconstruction. Radical Reconstruction is led by the Republicans who win control of every state in the North and increase their seats in Congress in 1866. This is a group that will pass the Reconstruction Act of 1867, calling for the creation of new governments in the southern states. They want to divide the states into ten, the ten states into five military districts. Johnson did not like to negotiate. He did not like to consult. He just wanted to act. And so Johnson was not an effective president, and the Republicans in Congress got their way. The battle next moved into the 1866 congressional elections. Johnson set a precedent by becoming the first president to actively campaign against the opposing political party. He went on a whistle-stop tour he called the Swing Around the Circle. Andrew Johnson went from Washington up to New York and then across uh, the Northwest all the way to Chicago, advocating his policy of reconstruction and attacking radical Republicans at every train stop. So it proved to be a disaster. It was the most counterproductive exercise in presidential speech making in American history. Republicans won the congressional elections of 1866 overwhelmingly. A combination of radical Republicans and moderate Republicans hold a two-thirds majority in Congress so that any veto that Johnson might have applied to their measures they could overturn uh, because they had enough power. A tug of war between the two branches quickly ensued. They pass a Reconstruction Act that reverses much of what he had done. Johnson is absolutely furious at this. He thinks it's too much of an overreach by Congress. But the radical Republicans led by people like Thaddeus Stevens have enough support with the moderate Republicans that they are going to be able to override the vetoes. And so they prevent the, co the Confederate leaders from holding offices, and they get 750,000 African-American men to vote for. And you see African-Americans start to emerge into government. Between 1869 and 1880, 16 African-Americans are elected to the House of Representatives and two to the Senate, like Blanche K. Bruce and Hiram Revels. These are people who are now emerging as positive political leaders in the South, in the New South, hoping to change those old traditions of hatred and racism. You also have people in the South like, that were called scalawags. These were Southerners who supported the Republican policies of Reconstruction. And you have carpetbaggers who were Northerners who moved South during Reconstruction in an effort to make a little bit of money. Both terms were for people who were absolutely hated by Southerners. But these were people who also opposed secession, and they loved living in the South. There was some corruption in here, but it was fairly rare. Thanks, guys, for paying attention. Hopefully we took good notes, and we'll see you tomorrow.